China's top electrical vehicle brand BYD has outsold Tesla the last quarter of 2023. So will this trend continue and will they be the top EV dog in the world? Yeah, Elon, you used to talk bad about us, but maybe I will hire Yi Long Ma to be our CEO. Uh, first of all, look at the seal. It is going against the Model 3. Then we got the dolphin, the seagull, the entire animal kingdom. Oh, David, a lot of people are wondering if these Chinese car brands can beat Tesla. And if they do beat them, is it because they just copy other brands? Or is it because they're way lower price too? Whoa. Uh, may, anyway, we're going to break it down. This is trending in the business world, the tech world, the car world, a lot of different worlds. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. But you know what else is trending? Smala sauce. Check it out. It is an American-made Chinese-American chili oil. It is delicious. Everybody likes it. Um, I think a lot of people were wondering on Reddit, Andrew, that... They were like, I didn't even know China had EVs. Mm. And you know why that is? Because the EVs are not allowed in the U.S., Canada, or Western Europe. Right. So that's the majority audience on the internet that we consume, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people didn't know <clears throat> everywhere in South America, the Middle East, all over Southeast Asia, BYD outsells any other EV car manufacturer by a lot. Yeah, and these are pure EVs. These are not hybrids. These are pure electric vehicles, but... By the way, we do have to know BYD is not like a Tesla in comparison of brand level. It is it is like a cheap brand. Yes. It yes, is known yes, as an affordable brand. That's why, partially why they're selling so many is because they're very affordable, right? To no, no, different no. markets. Uh, they have a new one called the Seagull, Andrew, which starts at $9,000 USD, a pure EV with a touchscreen. And I believe the one that is popping right now, the Dolphin, that is big in like, you know, uh, lower income countries is about 13k wow wow but i mean i guess regardless i guess i guess this this chinese brand for example byd is winning on a kind of cheap level but can chinese car brands reach that high level market well there are high-end chinese car brands i believe li auto neo amongst some other ones mm -hmm. but BYD started at the bottom and is starting to release some expensive cars. Ooh. So anyway, Andrew, we're just going to give a quick breakdown for the audience. Andrew, do you know why China goes so hard at the EV game? What? So yeah, China's combustion car market is not that well known. Right. They're, they didn't make the best combustion cars. Right, right. Right. They didn't reach that high tier level. They made a lot, but they didn't reach that high tier level. Why? Why are they so good at the EVs? Well, though? well I think that when you don't have a really developed combustion drivetrain industry, it's easier to give it up and go full EV. Mm. Whereas Japan, they spent so much time perfecting their drivetrains with the, and th which is way more complicated, the mechanics of a combustion car than an electric car. Mm. It's hard for them to give it up. That's why Japan is still on hybrids and hydrogen. Wow. Whereas China, um, Andrew, also China is a very oil dependent country, but it doesn't have a lot of oil reserves relative to how much it uses. Also half of China is like a high desert the western side of China. So actually it is perfect for solar. Solar contributes to the electric grid. Right, right. So there's multiple reasons why China would lean into electric, solar, things like that. Right, right, right. Also, I think pollution is a gigantic issue in China and uh, the more combustion cars, it creates more pollution. Yeah, no, China has terrible pollution issues. So of course they got to do something to offset it. Yeah. So actually BYD beat Tesla a long time ago if you included plug-in hybrids, but the, like you said, the last quarter of 2023 is the first time they beat Tesla in terms of pure electric well, cars. Well, because sold. Tesla's pure EV. So right. you have to compare. And of course, Tesla is kind of the benchmark. Tesla is kind of the, uh, it's kind of the gold standard. What is that? Like the Rolex kind of, of, Right. Of and and now there's cars. like higher end ones like Lucid Air that have come out, but it's like, I only seen one Lucid Air in my entire life. Right. <laughs> like yeah. in terms of people driving it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as widespread. Um, Does this remind you at all of, of when Toyota and Honda were coming into the U.S. markets, Andrew, in the 1970s and 80s? People were like, oh man, them Japanese tin cans <laughs> gonna crush the second they hit a wall. You know what I mean? Because people were basically doubting... Uh, the, the, the construction, the, the cars were more lightweight. Are they strong enough to pass the crash test, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, is the quality up to par? Yeah, I think those are, I think those are legit questions. I mean, because to be honest, China's brand as a manufacturer, actually China does produce a lot of high-end stuff, but more so they are known for producing a lot of affordable things. Right. That's the narrative around China. But I want to say the last like three years, five years, they've been really yeah. growing out but of that. But to work yourself out, 
of the made in China label being associated with something being cheaply made, that's going to be hard to shake off. Right, right, right. I think that the BYD's play is going to be like, man, this is the best $9,000 EV you could possibly get. But by the way, it's still $9,000. Yeah, it's way better than any $9,000 EV you can get in America because you can't get a $9,000 EV. Yeah, I don't even know if you can get a used Prius. Maybe. Oh, for $9,000. No, yeah, a used, used hybrid, hybrid yes. yeah, not a pure EV. Yeah. Um, maybe a Chevy Volt or something like that. All right, all right, Andrew, so just to go to show you, this is the Baron Davis Lee Ning from 2008, and this is the Way of Wade Lee Ning from 2023. And so, you know what I mean? There was a gigantic jump, Andrew, and it's weird because, and look, you got to stick with me here. This is why the sneaker comparison is going to be interesting, Andrew. Chow Dan used to be a knockoff Jordan brand, Andrew, mm -hmm. and now Chow Dan signed Keldon Johnson from the San Antonio Spurs and is making pretty decently or good rated basketball shoes. And you know why this is relevant, Andrew? Because Tesla in the German factories even use BYD batteries for the Model Y. But here's the crazy thing, Andrew. BYD, as of recent, as like 10 years ago, was a copycat car manufacturer. Yeah. So you're saying the arc of BYD as a cheap knockoff brand, because when, when we visited China like 10 years ago, I remember seeing fake bmws now when they i were mean byd brand they right? were byd cars they were real cars but they just looked like bmws and they basically copied bmw obviously 10 15 years ago that's at the peak of chinese copycat level right but now you're saying that china has like in a way i don't want to say copycatted so much but their technology is getting so good and they're so good at it and they've actually just made good stuff and now other people are starting to use their technology that they once maybe started off copying someone yes, else. Yes, yes, yes. It's a crazy. Arc. So now the copier, the copycat, has now become the copied, or at least the supplier. Right, to, right. Like literally, Tesla Model Ys use BYD batteries. Andrew, <laughs> let's take a look at some BYD cars. This is their new high end line. Like we said, BYD started off. Uh, it didn't start off high like uh, Lee Auto or Neo in China. What do you think? What do you think of these high-end cars? I mean, cars? some of these look pretty good in concept, yeah. Here are some mid-end cars, mm. okay? Mm. And then here are the cheap cars that are really like what is like, I guess BYD is famous no, for. No, yeah, these look like a Honda Fit or something. Like, it looks like one of those compact budget vehicles that you can get in America that, you know, are easy to park, kind of like a smart Smart car or, uh, yeah, like a mini. Uh, fit, yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, let's get in the comment section. Somebody said, I'm pretty sure nobody globally wants to buy a Timu EV. That's funny. Uh, but some people said, uh, are you sure? Developing countries? I went to Costa Rica and I saw everything. Somebody said, in Indonesia, if you call a grab car, which is essentially their Uber, they're like, there's a 75% chance you're just pulling up in a BYD. Mm. Do you think a lot of people, they don't think about these emerging markets, right? That finally... Are, you know, their economies are stabilizing, possibly politically stabilizing. They can, they they want things. They want EV cars, Andrew. They're not going to go get a Tesla. Well, that's because, I mean, in the Western world, BYD is not a competitor because they're not allowed and they're probably, probably maybe too cheap compared to some of the American cars. But in America, compared to the rest of the world, we're kind of like, man, if you're not rocking a Rolex, I don't even want to take a look at your watch. Right. You know where it's interesting, Andrew, the one... Western or like England, Anglo country that has a lot of BYDs is Australia. Because Australia is like very close. You know, mm, some people say Australia. BYDs are Asia. allowed in Australia. That's interesting. Um, So basically, Andrew, if they were ever to come through the US, first of all, they would need to get political approval and they would be hit with a 30% tariff, which would sort of kill the, the fact that like the cars are 10,000 because then it would ruin their price advantage. Right, it'd put it up to like maybe 14,000 or something. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, you know, the only reason that BYD is able to uh, basically survive is because it is subsidized by the government. Mm -hmm. Because it is subsidized for domestic consumption within China. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, yeah, it was so crazy that everybody thought that Tesla was just going to dominate the entire world and everybody was going to be driving some tier of Tesla. Yeah, well, I, I think what happened, I think you realize that also... Like, the way people drive in other countries, usually they're not... In most other countries, they're not driving as fast. Like, if you go on the highway in other developing countries, usually the ones that I've been to, at least in Asia, they're not hitting 80 miles per hour. They're not hitting 70 miles per hour. Right, and, right. and you're saying the Teslas kind of look like race cars, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, in America, we drive very fast on these big roads, and we like to drive fast. Now, although a lot of Asian streets in Asia are kind of... They look chaotic... 
people are not driving that fast. So you don't need gigantic, huge cars. I feel like that's kind of part of it. Yeah, Asia's like, well, give me. They're, they're, they're definitely less into the Autobahn race. Yeah, like the big sure. wheels, like the big trucks with like the 30 inch wheels. Like they don't really Somebody care said, about that. if BYD so good, why is the stock doing so bad? And my Tesla stock keeps printing money. And they said, actually, it's because BYD really just has like very, very low margins. But that doesn't have to, the margins, the lower margins allow it to push the volume. Mm. So, and BYD, kind of like Chinese restaurant. Right. <laughs> Making us razor thin margin, but just making a lot of it. Somebody said, man, the only reason why the Chinese EVs are getting so good is because they copied all the U.S. tech from Tesla and other brands, of course. Uh, I don't know if they copied Tesla, did they? Dude, there's probably a, you know, yeah, like I'm we said, sure. people are poaching. There's definitely the copycat. It's just like the NBA, man. I poach your assistant coach. You're going to give me the playbook, there's right? There's some copycat. I mean, there's for sure. It's possible. It's possible. Um, somebody said, how come Americans are getting so mad that Chinese are just beating them at their own game of capitalism? Dude, I always said that. I said, like, China, like, America in itself is, like, a capitalistic country. But on the global stage, China is the most capitalistic because they're just like, <laughs> hey, I don't care if you say I copy. If I make it, I make it. If I make it for cheaper, then I sell it for cheaper and that's what it is. Did you know there's an EV brand that's started by rich enthusiasts in China where they remake like 1964 Chevelles, but all electric? That's pretty cool. Yeah. No, I'll pop up some of the designs here. It's crazy. It's like literally like stuff from like 1957, but with brand new interiors. Obviously, uh, the architecture of EV is completely different. That looks dope. This one right yeah. here? Yeah. That looks cool. Um, last but not least, this last comment basically said, listen, guys, history doesn't repeat itself, but it usually rhymes. This is just like when Japanese came in with the small, cheap, gas efficient, somewhat crappy cars. American cars have been heavy. You know, American cars are very heavy. So what they do is they pump them full of more horsepower to be able to carry the metal. The Asians always had a different mindset to cut the metal down. Mm. So you didn't need as powerful of an engine to get the mileage or the speed. You know what I mean? Like a, it was like a whole different design. Yeah, it's philosophy. like Americans built their cars to crash into each other. Because America was like, if you're going to drive a car, it better, it better win the crash. And right. then you're like, well, why would you want to crash? And they're like, I don't know. We're American. We're about to kill you if we for crash. For sure, for sure. I mean, like even in America right now, I would say like if you're a real American guy, you probably still like the Mustang. And if you're like a different type of American you probably get the Hellcat mm. <laughs> but mm. the, those those are not made with an Asian design philosophy either of them um so basically this guy said I'm really looking for Chinese EV manufacturers to put a lot of pressure on American manufacturers to either go EV quicker or really just think of something other than high powered heavy ass expensive cars that don't handle very well mm, got um it. ultimately Andrew what do you think of this some people think that now that BYD has outsold Tesla they're never going to relinquish like, this trend is just going to perpetuate forever moving forward. Mm, I have no idea. I have no idea. Maybe. But, you know, as long as places like Africa are still developing and need affordable cars, I'm sure, I'm, yeah, I'm sure BYD is going to outsell. But not in, like, the Rolex level market. You know, like, tex Tesla is the Rolex. It's right. the name brand everybody wants. They yeah, I mean, it. even like more Western centric people in China buy Tesla and, because they want to be seen in a Tesla over a BYD. Right, right, right. Um, interestingly enough, Andrew, they said the Teslas that were built in the Shanghai factory are the best built Teslas because I guess Teslas, they vary a lot depending on which factory they were built in. Interesting. Like in terms of door gaps and wind noise or whatever. Um, ultimately, I'll say this, man. I, I'm always for more competition. I understand, you know, the West... Uh, they have a lot of concerns. They're like, what if the Chinese EVs are the most popular in the world, but the Chinese satellites, they control the EVs. In case something happens, then they use it as an attack. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's obviously, you know, part of it. And, you know, we'll see if the Chinese EVs ever make it over. But otherwise, check out this channel, Wheels Boy. You can see all types of crazy cars. Andrew, real quick, I just want to show you. They got a $35,000 car, Andrew. With the gulf gull wing doors, okay? Wow. Andrew, they got a truck that's an EV that looks like a halo car. They got micro Jeeps. So it's like a Jeep, but like a, almost looks like a golf cart, but it's a car. And then, of course, you've got these super $100,000 EZEC cars that literally look like they came out of an anime. No, they look like Bentleys, but they're just EVs. Yes, but they look like almost like super villain cars. 
Or Super something. villain Maybox, yeah. Anyways, guys, you let us know what you think about BYD and the future of Chinese EVs. Are they just going to dominate the lower half of the market in the world? Or can they move up and shake off that kind of made in China is cheap narrative? Who knows? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, one last thing. I learned that the big difference between a BYD and a Tesla, Andrew, is that Tesla generally keeps all its interiors very minimalistic, whereas BYD, they'll give you, you know, that textured leather and all that, you know, some cushy things in the interior. It just depends on what you like, guys. Not promoting BYD. I'm just saying what it is. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.